Are you also wondering if the channel loss equation can be done by CTOE only? The short answer is no. But in this video, I'm going to show the image of why not only apply the CTOE in the equation. As discussed in the why not TX FFE only video, most multi product studies require equalizing the channel loss roughly 30 dB at the next rate. So, in this video, that why not TX FFE only video, we may only focus on the 30 dB case study of why CTOE only wrong work. Before any interesting images, let's understand the continuous time linear equalizer CTOE further. The CTOE can cancel not only the precursor ISI, but also the long tail post-cursor ISI, and those are strength of the CTOE as we've known in the Y CTOE video. However, there are still a few CTOE's weaknesses. First, it may amplify the high frequency noise or crosstalk by throwing the DC content away. The signal to noise ratio SNR will drop significantly due to the high frequency noise amplifications. The second concern is that the CTOE can only equalize a smooth frequency response, not a complicated or bumping channel with discontinuities. Lastly, the design circuit challenge of the CTOE is the bandwidth and picking gain trade-offs. It's not easy to get a high boost around 15 dB in one stage, and more stage may shrink the bandwidth quickly due to the cascading effect. We must keep the bandwidth high enough without equalizing the receiver itself. Please be advised, the equation we talk about here is to equalize the channel, not the RX itself. Let's quickly view the case study of a 17 dB loss channel. If a CTOE equals the 17 dB loss or median reach channel, that's feasible in the frequency domain. Like the frequency response, the time domain pass response and PRBS7 I demonstrate small residual pre and post cursors and open the I diagram at the sampler's input and CTOE's output at the 17 dB CAS study. Again, any circuit image, if we can apply the CTOE only for the 30 dB dose channel, for a case study of a 30 dB loss channel, this simplified simulation shows the equation feasibility. As you can see, the VRI is wide open, but the swing could be only 40 mV P2P differential or even less and closed. Why? Bingo! Due to the noise, cost talk, offset, etc., circuit impairments were not well included in the simulation or model in this case study. So, this could be a good image showing our circuit image could be more useful than the simulation result only, which could miss a lot of things. Of course, in the simulation, we can add all those circuit impairments into the simulation, but the simulation time could be too long to simulate all cases in a reasonable time. So, if we know what the worst case noise crosstalk offset should be, we can simply add those impairments on top of the required I and determine if the final I is good enough or close. Does that make sense to everyone? In addition to the high frequency noise amplification, we can apply the crosstalk amplification into the crosstalk study. The floor plan on the left shows the near end TX could be the aggressor of the adjacent RX, which is the victim. The blue curve shows the crosstalk simulations and its scale to the next ray and its second and third harmonic magnitude. For a far end TX, the output strength is the same as the near end TX, but attached to a 30 dB loss channel. Therefore, due to the CTOE's high frequency boost, 
and near end TX strong high frequency cause talk. The sample's input signal consists of lots of interference blocking the far end signals. So the 30 dB equation ability might not be achievable. Again, around the CQE might be able to equalize 30 dB. That's not preferable for noise or crosstalk application. In addition, the crosstalk must be reduced as small as possible by the careful on chip package and PCB design. We will know another constraint is that the CQE can only equalize a smooth frequency response, not a complicated or bumping channel with discontinuities. This notch frequency response is to verify our image, although it may be obvious to most people that the CQE should fail in such response or channel response. Of course, this is just an extreme case, and the notch should be avoided either in the package or the PCB design. But the discontinuity may always exist, especially a 30 dB dose channel. Here are some particle black plant or cable response images. As you can see, the frequency response is quite smooth at the low frequency, but a little bit bumping at the high frequency, which the CTOE cannot take care of well. So, not only the CTOE response would not be the inverse of the channel exactly, but also its response may vary over PVT. Therefore, the CTOE was designed to be highly programmable to adjust the response accordingly. Even though the calibration of the CTOE setting is a must, but that's not an easy task for the CTOE to be inverse of the channel. Lastly, for loss bumping discontinuity, we might need some bit help from the DFE. Here is a summarized image you may have for why not only CTOE in the equation. If your CTOE only must equalize a loss up to 30 dB, then more TX output soon would be needed, and most specifications or circuit implementations only cover 800 mV P2P differential or 1V P2P differential at the most. On the other hand, for the CTOE only at the 30 dB loss, that will require more gain without dropping the speed too much. Here is a simplified image from the TX to the channel and RX output as a further example. The TX output swing is 800 mV P2P differential, but after a 30 dB channel, the high frequency swing around the next ray could be 25 mV. If the CTOE boosts equation properly and has the 60 dB gain around the next ray frequency, and exactly the CTOE's output swing could be 50 mV or less, while the residual noise, cost talk, Nonlinearity and cetera circuit impairments were added, so it's likely there is a zero swing and the eye is closed. In a real system budget, the CTOE may only equalize up to 15 dB loss or slightly higher and get help from other equalizers for a total 30 dB loss target. Again, the CTOE output swing or eye high could be very little due to the peaking gain and bandwidth trade-offs. So, the CTOE cannot equalize the 30 dB loss with a reasonable output swing. Another image would be the CTOE's noise cause talk application, which would degrade the eye opening further due to the adjacent TX interference and CTOE's high frequency boost. The last image would be the discontinuity constraint which the CTOE cannot do anything about it, and the FFE or DFE should help a lot. Thanks for watching. Before you go, if you are benefiting from those circuit images, I would love to hear your feedback, and please share your comments down below. Lastly, please share the video link with people who may be benefiting from it.